So hello everyone, welcome here at my Fritz Forte piano. I think it's the first time that I'm sit down here at the piano and just talk to you with a score on the desk, not standing in front of my bookshelf talking about tempo research. And there is a reason for that. Today I'm going to share with you my thought process, my practicing process, the way I um, crafted, so to say, my interpretation of the C minor variations of Beethoven that I recently uploaded on the channel. If you haven't seen those, if you see this video a little bit later, I will link that recording here in the info card. Okay, and so without further ado, let's dive into the C minor variations. When I first played those variations and, the, and I saw the tempo, 88 journey gives. I stated in the introduction of the recording, but I was a little shocked. It's, and I guess you were shocked too. Shocked in a way, I don't mean like terribly shocked, but it's not so fast, certainly at the beginning. So this is, this is 88, this gives this tempo. basically is about half of how musicians today start these variations and if you just look at the notation here I have a second camera rolling here I hope that works if you look at the notation it's a three four time signature and basically and the theme of the variations there is not so much it indicates for a division of the quarter note and the time signature into eight notes because that's a little bit what you do here the metronome gives the eight notes down So then if you continue, you have just 16th notes that falls in a certain way still in line with what is a normal 3-4 time signature. Here there's nothing that is actually indicating a tempo that goes beyond or below the second as a tempo ordinario. Of course, then you get variation number 10. But are 30 second notes and we know that once you have a notation that implies also that uses also 30 second notes or faster note values than the normal note values which are 16th notes normal harmonic pattern like the harmonic um, uh, you know harmonic chords that follow each other so if you exceed the normal pattern of the tempo ordinario not so to say for a known for a certain time signature then the tempo goes slower so here you have a first indication then again you return to a kind of normal thing here you have all these uh these thirds okay it can be a technical exercise but then here you have a variations with 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 the with the with the scale <laughs> These scales here, I would say, fall in the category of being ornamental. You cannot say that these notes are structural in the way that these 30 second notes are structural. For sure, these are structural. You have to give them a certain articulation and accentuation. So here, for sure, if you would follow a normal 3-4 pattern where you have like a beat or a count every quarter note, then you would come a little bit in problems here because and I don't know how people today do that. I didn't check, but I can imagine they go a little bit slower here. So then, then, then you are having problems with firmly articulating and accentuating this here. It becomes really fast. Um, here, you have a technical issue. In 88, I don't know how many notes you would play it here per second, but that's a lot. Uh, so even in, in this tempo, pretty fast so imagine you have to double this then okay then we continue you have triplets here structural note value so they drag the tempo they take the tempo down same thing here same thing there so here again you are in a normal pattern so there is a mixture of that and of course here variation number 29 and then certainly variation number 31 that's of course when you have in the bass Can not imagine playing this twice as fast? So then the question comes, when I realized that, I said, okay, 
first of all, my default position is whole beat. Let's not let's let's not let's not touch upon that. So let let me not touch that element because if you do that, you're completely lost. You, even if you doubt the principle, you have to allow yourself to throw a certain time frame switch off all doubts because if you don't do that if you don't take this whole beat principle as a fact then there is no way you're going to solve a recording or a recording or, or, or a piece like this so once i realized that i thought well does every variation need to be played in the same tempo and now if you go to the next variation i don't know if it's in this book by the way um, no it's in the other book there are two books here so they they mix that, but that's the that's the variations uh, that Beethoven made on the theme of the third uh, symphony. Their journey rides like I'm not giving here a tempo indication because every variation has this particular notation, and you have to figure out based upon the notation what is the tempo. So, okay, this is a practice um, historically described like here in Journey, where a large variation series can have a change of tempo. And that's the reason why he didn't give a metronome mark. But here he gave a metronome mark without that uh, um, remark of choosing basically your, your tempo yourself. So the implication is there that you play these variations with the same tempo. And I think it makes sense. Certainly here, if you realize that you have a Strachconda tempo, so that's a slow ternary triple meter movement. And once you realize that accent here, you understand why he uses a 16th note. Because he wants to, he wants you to delay that for as long as you can. It, it gives this, this nice touch on, on, on the second beat. And in this Chaconne movement, and also this practice where you have these very gentle chords progressions, you know, basically going from C minor to, yeah, he, he's not even touching the dominant here. So it's a very simple chord progression that basically he follows the whole piece through. Here also. And so the idea that you would change the tempo here in this, these variations, I think, is not an option. It's the power of many variations, by the way. What Jenny writes in the Opus 35 variations, and Jenny makes up Opus 35. I don't know if it's an Opus number in Beethoven's work, but anyway, uh, that's an exception. That's a really exception. If the composer doesn't give you an indication of change of tempo in a variation series, you basically find a common ground for all variations. And then, of course, your options are not too big. You start from, obviously, here, the last variation. What is your maximum tempo, you could say? If you find that, combine that with the Allegretto movement that Beethoven wants you to play in. Like, what is Allegretto? Allegretto is a character as well as kind of speed indication. It's like the middle tempo. It's like the Allegro Moderato. It's like, you know, Allegretto in that time is oftentimes seen as the tempo ordinary, the middle tempo. And of course, that's around the second. We know that, but then going lower. And that matches with the 88 and converted to single beat eighth note. So that's a little bit slower than the second. You still have this feeling in three quarter notes and you can play and then you can just continue and there is no reason to hold back and then you get this giant uh, massive like mountain that comes from from nothing and, and have this giant climax going up to So once your 
temple floor has set by the last variation or the variation number number 18 you can do that on your on your own of course why not and Moshe skips 96 by the way so that's a little faster see what fits for you or you can say you know what I just take a tempo that was correct at least at a certain time in history for Karl Czerny which is of course I mean he's so close to Beethoven and see how it works but once you decide on that you are going to play the piece obviously to bring it in balance and how do you do that there are two ways either you play with the metronome for a few times it does not hurt it doesn't make you a mechanical player it just makes sure that you don't have to think while practicing as much on your tempo consistency because I can tell you certainly if you're going to play this piece you're going to speed up in the beginning because this is such a known piece and you're going to unconsciously trying to repeat that so you're going up so the metronome will give you this security of course you don't play like a metronome once you are confident once you have this color so to say of these variations that you say okay this is a that's for me clear than here once you have that in mind so that you feel a little more secure about your tempo choice while playing then you just play little pieces little bits of these variations and you mix them so you start this is the most important thing you have to feel that just one I will not talk in this segment about all the different articulations and uh, clarification actually of motives that you can do. That's for another video. slowing down because of course I was a little bit I mean uh, this is pretty fast in 88 if you check again the tempo I can imagine I slow down a little bit yeah da, 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 da. it's pretty fast actually <laughs> you check my recording I was checking while I was editing and here I slowed down even below that journey tempo and in a way it feels great because here you have this I, I, I wasn't aware of that I must say but it works when you create this atmosphere like you are lifted by you are projected by Beethoven in what is a kind of paradise whatever paradise means for you I mean this is such a huge contrast and I mean we're not talking about tempo anymore this is and in a way we are because you want to see to last because this if you play this piece you know this is going to happen and all of you of course know the piece so well so you know it's going to happen but imagine that you didn't and as a musician i tell you you have the power to make that suggestion to make that suggestion that, that let me show you just by 
holding this C a little longer. And that's the great thing of playing in this tempo. You have that liberty. You are not like pushed constantly by this fast pulse. You, you can like open the soul of people. It's like unbelievable. This moment makes you so happy to be a musician. variation a little bit down because I, I I felt like walking on clouds here and you have this again to get a little bit of an accent and then so we are digressing here from that moment I want to share but the, but the beginning is down let's continue you have to do that. But again, that's for another video. Also because this piano has absolutely no compromise in weight, also damper weight, which was like not easy for your spot for you. Difficult here we go to a triplet. To a triplet. variations that feels very slow until you realize the intimacy jump here how powerful a natural of course we know that it comes but, but here you can make it too surprising cheated a little bit, I played that variation slower.
and so on, and you have here these beautiful patches in it. Still feel this movement. So that's the way I practice this, like to, to create this balance, there is a vacuum cleaner area somewhere, so it doesn't matter. So to create this balance of this piece, which is basically coming through one tempo, and it's regardless of which tempo you take. Again, make my point clear, there is the, the fastest note values in this piece dictate first the limit of your tempo. You're not slowing down, because if you do that, Again, I honestly said I've cheated in two variations, but I think there it's I can get away with that because I take you in a certain position where there is a tension and I release that air again in the next variation. I wouldn't do that next time anymore. It's just something that I was not aware of. But if you change your tempo too much based upon you want to have this because you want to have this like expressive Beethoven who was outraged then you can you will have find difficulties in bringing this these variations together that at the last note when you have this you have this feeling of like okay now i've gone through this piece completely and i can still feel the first chord and if you have if you feel the first chord the first bar still at the end of the piece then my work is done i'm i've done what i'm supposed to do i've delivered this and so that's my way of working. And again, we can go way more in depth in articulation. What this, what, what this tempo floor of this tempo ceiling, if you would like to call it like that, what this enables you and what it uh, forces you to do, because that's another thing. You will not escape to craft these little articulations, these little accents. And this instrument, it's, very interesting for me to have the Frenzel 1825 as well here. That's another world. Heavier dampers, heavier action, a little bit less direct touched here. I'm not saying you're playing on the clavichord, but it's still very close to that world. And this piano gives you that refined touch that you can work with in this tempo, make this baroque almost articulation. And no surprise that, of course, that was the way Beethoven was. Uh, educated anyway this is of course these segments will always be longer than i anticipate because there is so much to say and every time we touch upon an element there are so many other elements to touch upon but leave me in the comments what you think about it if you're still here at this moment of the video i suppose you enjoyed this uh, but certainly leave me in the comments if you want to have more of this there is also the practicing sessions that we used to have on the channel. I transferred them to Patreon because we need to find a way to make this all sustainable. And that's a great platform also to be for a beautiful community there. Uh, so I know I make the case for Patreon a lot, but it is essential in a way that also, you know, we can continue the work that we are doing here, bringing also other musicians on the platform like Alberto and there are other musicians that are waiting to come on the platform here. And so this whole thing of authentic sound is becoming like an art, arts or organization. And I like this idea that it's not anymore about me. But again, yeah, it's the sun is going up for everybody for nothing. But that's about it in this life, I would say. So I very much appreciate my patrons. We are now with over 115 patrons, which is just mind-blowing. Um, 
And so just join there the group and you will have access immediately for whatever uh, monthly amount that you would spend, even $1, you get access to my practicing sessions in which you will see me do this live, struggling with music as well. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe certainly to the channel if this is your first video and hit the bell icon also because that will enable you to, to notify you for future updates and videos and there is a lot to come. So stay tuned for all music that is waiting for you to be rediscovered. Okay, again, thanks for watching and see you soon again.